What is going on, guys? Thank you so much for joining me here today on this Tuesday, October the 25th, 2022, for another metallic episode of Music of Destruction. Bringing you guys the very best in metal related content on the only metal channel you fucking need. If you missed anything in the past week, you know the drill. Click the annotation up in the corner, all the videos will come down from the last week. I'd certainly appreciate it. Remember to hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on that bell for all notifications. Up front, controversial, opinionated, and brutally honest and critical. If you don't like that, I don't know why the fuck you're here. Welcome to Album Review Tuesdays here on the channel tonight. I'm doing a review of an absolute thrash metal classic with Metallica's Ride the Lightning. Now this was released in 1984 on Megaforce Records. Now for those of you living under a rock, I mean, I did talk about this before, but you should know who Metallica are. If you're any type of a metalhead, you know who Metallica is. They're one of the pioneering bands of the first wave of thrash metal, one of the most legendary and long-standing acts in thrash. However, as I said before in my Metal Album Warfare's video, if you guys didn't watch that, um, after 1989, the band took a drastic dive into mediocrity with a more hard rock, radio-friendly approach after the Black Album, which was released in 1991, right? And that's very unfortunate because one of the things that I think contributed to this was the loss of their legendary bassist Cliff Burton in 1986 who passed away after the bus accident that I'm sure all of you know about uh, who died in 1986 unfortunately very very sad uh, Cliff Burton the best metal bassist of all fucking time in my opinion and I'm sure he's up there right now with Dimebag, Lemmy and Ronnie James Dio and every other legend we've lost in the last 25 to 30 years and they've got an incredible band going up there I mean you can just imagine right uh, they've influenced so many upcoming thrash metal bands over the years that it's absolutely incredible okay so the lineup is as follows we have James Hetfield rhythm guitar and vocals Lars Ulrich drums Kirk Hammett lead guitars and Cliff Burton bass of course they were also all involved with the songwriting as well all right let's get into the review now the album opens up with one of my favorite tracks fight fire with fire and we get this incredible clean guitar that breathes with passion and emotion before it builds up and explodes into a full-on thrash metal attack with all cylinders blazing the sky rips apart as the universe gets blown into nothingness and I mean the guitar work, drums, bass and vocals are also full of passion and anger and it's a true testament to what Metallica was about during this time which was expressing their disgust with war and political agendas that enslaved everybody at the time you know like you, you enslaved like soldiers and everybody who was going to war uh, that sending people to die in oil wars was patriotic or noble it's not okay and the passion of this track is amazing and like I said Metallica were very real during this time and this opener is absolutely incredible all right next up we've got the title track ride the lightning this one is a bit of a slower mid paced track that still has a lot of speed and intensity but it builds up later on as the track progresses but it's got some epic soaring classic traditional metal elements In fact the whole album does but also contains a lot of fear and terror as the track is all about a man who's about to face execution by death in the electric chair, of course. And the music and lyrics convey these visions and emotions very effectively. Uh, and the production fits the album very well. It's not like the super polished, clean production. It's got a very garage-like production, very punchy drums and guitar, very crunchy. Um, and this to me creates a very organic raw feel and vibe which is exactly what Metallica was at the time long before they became a product or a household name. This is an awesome track as well. Next up we've got For Whom The Bell Tolls. This one has some of Cliff's best bass riffing of all time. And if you watch the Cliff Em All uh, full video which is what's playing on the, in the background there on my green screen, you'll know how amazing of a fucking bassist Cliff Burton was. That Cliff Em All VHS, I have to get it, contains some of his best work it's absolutely amazing how incredible this bassist was and never mind that just who he was how fun he was and how integral he was to the creation of Metallica and I know Dave Mustaine did do a lot of their songwriting early on he even wrote the opening uh, riffs for fight fire with fire with the clean guitar parts and everything 
But this track is on another level because the flawless electricity of this album is off the fucking charts. And when you blast this album, it's unreal, and it takes you back to simpler times when life was simpler and a lot better, and metal was a hell of a lot more real, at least in my opinion it was. But the track conveys all of these things, and Metallica's aggression was on another level at this time, as these four young men were feeling and expressing all the things they saw in the world that they hated at this time, and it's absolutely brilliant. The lead work all over this record is excellent too, and again, what this track represents is time running out for all of us and the inevitable death that we cannot escape that's coming for us but I also feel like it's a tale of fear and longing to escape as well and the 80s sound of this track and record like I said astonishing but so many elements of this record would take it forward in many ways and the guitar wizardry of this album is off the charts this is a great track as well next up we've got fade to black which is probably one of Metallica's most iconic songs not only instrumentally but also emotionally and the rating and ideas being laid out on this song are magical okay the feelings and emotions of this track are heavy and weigh on you quite substantially with a very bleak depressing feel because this track is all about death and dying so there's so many minor chords and melodies on this that will chill you to the bone this is truly compelling and it's about death and it's really sad but also contains some of the band's most incredible riffs to date with so many builds and tempo shifts into down tempo sections that keep the melancholy brewing while the intensity builds again with the heavy stuff and then subsides it's a really good mix and balance for this track great stuff next we've got trapped under ice this one is another really powerful epic thrash metal attack on all the senses of course with a profoundly moving guitar structure and riff choice and speed and aggression uh, and the way that it carries you through all of these incredible well-written musical choices is impeccable and absolutely brilliant this one is one of the heaviest on the record in my opinion as well with some amazing lead work here by Kirk Hammett but I mean that's the way Metallica was when they were in their prime they didn't have any goddamn concern for radio rock or wanting to conform with trends like the glam shit that would make them more accessible and widespread. No, this is something, however, that they would end up losing after 1989, but there's not one moment on this track I don't love, and everything about it is so goddamn brilliant. So guys, let's listen to some Ride the Lightning here on Music of Destruction. Enjoy.
And we're back guys, yeah, what an astounding track. Next up we've got Escape, and this one is a well-written track with a bit more melody but no less heavy as the rest of the tracks though, though there's a bit more emphasis on some choruses here from James, and the instrumentation is a lot more spaced out in terms of intensity and build, though of course the work of these four ones is flawless, once again on this track, and the emotions here are incredible as it's all about a wanting to escape the, the conformity, of bullshit everyday life as a human being, living on your own terms and never compromising for everyone. Just like this fucking channel, okay? Brutal honesty. Don't like it. What the fuck are you doing? Anyway, so when Metallica's own brand of thrash metal at this time were some um, the most elite at the time, along with bands like Exodus, Slayer, Overkill, Megadeth, Testament, Creator and Sodom, and bands like that, Exciter, Speed Thrash from Canada, Voivod, you know, Motorhead, of course, Proto Thrash, but Metallica really took the world by storm because there was a lot more about their music that people could relate to. Exodus, too, let's not forget Exodus, okay? And many bands like that, but I feel like Metallica really were some of the first that brought this thrash metal message to the world and it's it's absolutely amazing and the record emphasizes four pissed off youths that had a very fuck the world attitude if only they had kept that anyway another great track next up we got creeping death and for all intents and purposes this might just be one of the best thrash metal tracks ever written for everything that it got right it's heavy epic thunderous electric angry powerful and hard hitting okay and the staying power of this track and this album is insane and it's been almost 40 years we're talking 38 years since this was released and it's still stands the test of time i mean i can put this on at any time and feel like it's the first fucking time i've listened to it why can't more metal of today be like this anyway uh and i mean of course the writing is something that i feel was so far ahead of its time which is why it stands the test of time and the and the lightning that fills the air when you put this on will make the hair on the back of your neck stand up everything about this track is iconic and it's just bleeding with passion and anger and energy I love it to death. Now, closing out the album, we've got Call of Cthulhu, and this one is good, but probably my least favorite on the record. I mean, it's not a bad song by any stretch, but it's just not as good as the rest of the record, and I feel like it's a bit of a filler track, but again, it still has its own merit and place on the record, but again, just, I haven't listened to this track enough, though. Today, I've been blasting it a lot before the review, and I mean, it does have some incredible melodies and amazing atmosphere to it, from all the clean lead guitar riffs and things like that in the sections, and... There's a lot of minor notes on here that give it a very sinister atmosphere as well. Very powerful presence that I can appreciate. But then it builds up to the heavy sections, which are very well written and paced and placed correctly from a writing standpoint. So I'm not that disappointed. I'm just kind of nitpicking. I just wish they would have closed the album with Creeping Death instead of this one. But it's still a great track nonetheless. The final verdict for Metallica's Ride the Lightning is getting a 9 out of 10. Hail the underground and the fucking old school. All right, guys, there you have it. Another album review in the books here on the channel. Hope you enjoyed the premiere. If you're new, subscribe. Turn on that bell for all notifications. Merchandise available on the homepage. Click the store tab. All my merch is linked there from my bo both of my stores. I'd really appreciate it. Join the channel. Become an MOD elite right now. Get awesome perks at $2.49 for your first month, then $4.99 thereafter. Hit the join button. Get access to exclusive content, review requests within reason, ban interviews, and much more. Have an awesome night, guys. We'll see you for Album Ranking Wednesdays hails.